Welcome to Telecom TV. I'm Clarence Reynolds. The next generation of artificial intelligence for IT operations services will revolutionize offerings for operators, empowering partners to optimize their services. Microsoft is unveiling two new AI-powered solutions, and Jason Hogg, General Manager for AI Ops within Azure for operators at Microsoft, is here to tell us more. Welcome, Jason. You know, at this year's MWC, Microsoft announced two new AI ops services. What are those services and why is Microsoft investing in them? Oh, great questions and, and nice to meet you. And thank you for having me, by the way. Um, yeah, so at Mobile World Congress, there was a lot of talk obviously about AI and how AI can actually help sort of um, optimize sort of the way networks are run. Um, my team sort of been focusing for the last couple of years on um, building two new services. Um, the first one's called Azure Operator Insights, which is all about helping operators actually take the massive quantities of data that's generated in telco networks um, and just transform and generate insights from that data using AI. Um, and then the second service we're focused on is called Azure Operator Service Manager, which is a domain orchestrator that actually simplifies the ability to actually define network functions, um, services consisting of network functions, and have them um, lifecycle managed um, effectively on both Azure and our Edge property, um, Azure Operator Nexus platform. The two services um, can actually be used independently. Um, so Azure Operator Service Manager ships with Nexus. All of the Nexus um, network functions basically are run using Service Manager. But they can also, for maximum impact, um, be used together. So you can actually take um, insights out of your network, for example, um, take what would normally be maybe a manual change to your network um, and instead generate a configuration um, and then deploy it using Azure Operator Service Manager using safe deployment practices to ensure that as you actually deploy the configuration change, you're actually testing along the way to make sure that it actually has the, um, the effect that you want to in your network. Um, so we're super excited. There's sort of two foundational services that are actually um, super useful for accelerating operators' abilities to start embracing modern management techniques um, that are based on actually exactly the same procedures. And in fact, some of the back end code is actually very, very similar to what we use for actually running Azure. So it's sort of our way of actually bringing the same techniques and patterns that we've learned from running, you know, one of the largest world, you know, one of the world's largest sort of networks and basically um, making that available to operators. So super exciting. So Jason, these are both cloud-based services. What role do you see the cloud playing in AI transformation? One of the first steps for actually transforming um, an area is to actually get apps and get data into, into a similar location. So you can actually integrate um, applications, processes, and data together. So that's just fundamentally one of the biggest changes that I think the cloud's had across all industries. Um, the interesting aspects of sort of operators networks though is i think that there's there's certainly functionality there as sort of um that doesn't sit in public clouds and that's why we've sort of um or that's got sort of latency requirements that would be hard to meet in general sort of in um, public clouds and that's why we've been investing so much in our sort of the technologies that we acquired from at&t network cloud and actually developed our azure operator nexus platform to really enable the cloud to be extended into operators environments to actually bring um, much of the same capabilities that we use in Azure um, to enable sort of functionality to run both um, at the edge, in the cloud, and in a, in a hybrid um, fashion. So I think that, you know, the biggest sort of observation there is um, for operators especially, it's not just about the, the cloud and the public cloud, but the transformation starts with um, the combination of sort of uh, hybrid sort of um, cloud, if you will, and then uh, using these sort of technologies that I sort of mentioned earlier to actually start getting data um, into a common location so you can start to analyze the data and start to look at insights across data sets, which is really hard to do in sort of current um, networks where quite often the data is siloed um, and inaccessible or certainly not joinable, uh, making it hard to actually really understand what's going on in the, in the full network, if you will. So what does this mean for the edge? Is the assumption that all workloads are going to move into the cloud? You know, it, you know, I think there are some workloads um, that actually lend themselves really well to the public cloud. Um, there's still sort of, a, you know, a big part of the network that actually um, will run in sort of something like our Azure Operator Nexus platform that needs all of the traditional sort of, or I should, I should say the modern cloud management aspects. 
um, but running um, in the in the telcos um, in the edge, um, if you will. So um, I think it's going to be. Um, you know, I think data is probably one of the first sort of workloads, data analytics insights that we'll see sort of move into the cloud. Um, I then think what will happen is, you know, with a platform like Azure Operator Nexus, you're able to actually run your workloads in a hybrid fashion where you could start to then look at opportunities to maybe take advantage of public cloud for things like uh, disaster recovery uh, for some network functions, uh, maybe even burst. Um, and then certainly other scenarios like IoT sort of lend themselves very well to actually um, be able to run maybe either at the edge or in the uh, in the cloud, but you know the, the big sort of picture vision that Microsoft has is really that you know the the edge cloud, if you will, is really just an extension of the existing Azure um, cloud. Um, same sort of management plane, same management experiences, all available for operators to actually choose where they want the workloads to run, sort of at the edge, hybrid, or in the cloud. What benefits do these services provide for partners like traditional NEPs and ISVs? One of the things I think, if you look at sort of how Microsoft's been successful um, in, in almost every area that we've worked in, it's by basically being working very closely with partners and making sure that, you know, we traditionally do a really great job of sort of focusing on low level infrastructure frameworks and then sort of ensuring that partners have an opportunity to actually build on top of the platforms. Um, and this, you know, in the operator space, there's certainly no different there. You know, Azure Operator Nexus has a um, Nexus sort of pre-certified program where we're basically working very closely with a large number of network function vendors, um, NEPs, ISVs, and so forth to make sure they onboard successfully using the Azure Operator Service Manager technology that I mentioned earlier. Um, the other area I think is going to be super interesting is Azure Operator Insights. Um, one of the challenges that traditionally sort of has existed in telco networks is that different network functions from different vendors sort of emit telemetry that doesn't always align with standards and is sort of quite often ends up in different analytics engines, making it really hard to actually understand what's going on holistically across the whole network, but also making it really difficult to actually join data together. So a big part of the Operator Insights um, platform is um, a mechanism to allow partners, um, SIs, um, MEPs, or sort of ISVs, to actually build their own data products, which is sort of based on a, a data mesh architecture. And the idea being that these data products then allow us to actually start allowing operators to actually join different data sets together. So you can actually take data from your RAN, data from the mobile core, um, maybe even join it with sort of Teams telemetry on the back end if you want to actually understand what's going on with a, you know, in your enterprise scenarios, those sorts of things, and, and sort of optimize. So a big part of what we're doing with Operator Insights is going to be um, working with partners and making sure that we've got um, a great sort of um, ecosystem of sort of uh, data products um, running on Azure Operator Insights. There's a lot of discussion around AI and generative AI. How will these technologies help to bring change for operators? It's a super exciting time actually to be working at Microsoft, both you know, technically in terms of us really being on the forefront of how these technologies are evolving, but also I think Microsoft's doing an amazing job sort of leading in terms of defining ethical um, aspects of using the technologies and deploying and so forth as well. Um, you know, I, I think there's, you know, I really don't think there's any um, sort of scenario workload that's not going to be touched by these technologies. I think there's, you know, there's some incredible um, demonstrations that we built um, sort of around how, for example, you know, we could revitalize sort of voice communications. Um, at Mobile World Congress, I showed a demo of how we can actually take a, a you know, an interaction between sort of people in different countries and use um, language recognition, transcription, and then sort of uh, speech synthesis to actually allow somebody, you know, in English to talk to somebody in French. And, and then you can imagine sort of um, extending that scenario to allow sort of an LLM to actually help, um, you know, with restaurant reservations or, you know, helping check the weather or those sorts of things. So I think, you know, when you look at sort of traditionally sort of the capabilities that operators have actually provided, I think there's an amazing opportunity to sort of um, re sort of revitalize those in some ways. Um, the space that my team focuses on is sort of about AI ops, um, where we sort of see, you know, multiple stages in the journey. Um, you know, quite often what we see is the initial just sort of helping to get better at sort of troubleshooting where we can actually help you know, identify problems that maybe were getting missed in the past, help to isolate the cause of the problems and then sort of remediate those much faster and sort of helping operations teams, customer support teams um, to be um, more efficient at sort of um, solving challenges. 
then the next stage is sort of starting to think about sort of, hey, with all of this data that we've got, I've got the insights I've got in my network, how do I start to actually really understand operational costs, start to think about planning network growth capacity, but maybe factoring in resiliency as part of the discussion as well. So you actually expand your network, maybe reduce your cost, but make the, make the network more resilient. Um, and then ultimately, I think um, it's in many ways, it's about really understanding what customers are doing on the network so you can actually build amazing game exper- gaming experiences, you know, streaming, viewing experience and, and modern sort of enterprise um, scenarios, uh, you know, such as what you know, Teams and so forth that I mentioned earlier, and really understanding every single user's interaction with the network. Was it good? Was it bad? What do you need to do to make it better next time? All those sorts of things. So there's just, there's no aspect of the um the the industry and the actual um, the technology stack that won't be affected, I think. So. Well, Jason, thank you very much for your insights. No, Clarence, it was uh, nice to meet with you and uh, good talking with you.